In this lesson, we'll be talking about legal issues associated with ethical hacking. And I want you to get the impression that ethical hacking is all sweetness and light and just endless fun with no repercussions. There are significant repercussions with these types of activities, and it's important to become aware of them. One of the repercussions is that there are laws around the world that prohibit this type of behavior, specifically because it can be used to damage infrastructure or companies or take systems down and cause financial impacts to businesses and companies. So we're going to go over some of the laws that you should be familiar with. This is by no means all of them, but just to give you a taste of what's out there, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act was originally passed in 1984 and has been amended a couple of times. One of the important things here is in the very beginning of it, whoever having knowingly accessed a computer without authorization or exceeding authorized access so they're making illegal, unauthorized use of computer systems. And that's exactly what you are doing with ethical hacking if you don't have an agreement in place with your employer so that they know what you're doing and how you're going about doing it. We've talked about scope. Scope has to do with exceeding authorized access. So again, we go back to you want to make sure that you know what you're authorized to do and how far you are authorized to go. Going beyond that can not only get you in trouble with your employer, but it can get you in trouble with the law as well. Now this law goes on to talk about all sorts of other activities that you can't do like knowingly and with intent to defraud a protected computer without authorization. Intentionally without authorization to access any non-public computer of a department or agency of the United States. So there's a lot of detail in this particular law and it's worthwhile being aware and familiar with what it covers. It's not the only federal law that protects against these types of activities, however. We have the National Information Infrastructure Protection Act that talks about whoever having knowingly accessed a computer without authorization or exceeding authorized access, and that has to do with fraud and related activities, sounds very familiar if you're familiar with the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. What they did was they basically took the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and did some targeted work in order to make sure that national infrastructure was protected. So that's the United States, and we have several laws, not only federal laws, but state laws as well, that you need to be aware of if you are practicing these types of activities. There are laws around the rest of the world as well. One that made news in 2007 was in Germany, they passed a computer crime law that made it illegal to possess the tools that we'll be talking about in this series of lessons. There are a number of other activities that it has made illegal as well, but that's a really big one. So if you're doing work in Germany, just having these tools, and that includes creating tools that are like this, just having these tools in some fashion is illegal. You can see here on the Slashdot article, a similar law was proposed for the United Kingdom, but it was modified after outcry from the industry. So, as I said, there are laws in the United States, there are laws around the world that you need to be aware of if you are engaged in ethical hacking activities. A couple of big examples of cases where people thought they were doing research or claimed that they thought they were doing research and ran afoul of the law. You may have heard of Mafia Boy. In 2000, he took down several prominent websites with what at the time was the first known distributed denial of service attack. And he attacked CNN, Yahoo, E-Trade, Dell, Amazon, and eBay. He claimed to have been doing research for a security tool that he was working on. 
I can tell you from having been through that on the internet service provider side and dealing with trying to mitigate those activities and mitigate the damage being done to the websites that it didn't feel like research. And he was convicted of this activity and served time. Somebody else who was convicted of activity similar to that was Robert T. Morris, who was involved in the Morris Worm back in 1988, where he took down a significant portion of what we now call the Internet, which was slightly different at that time was more based around universities and research activity, so it was considerably smaller by several orders of magnitude than it is today. But he took down a lot of infrastructure with this worm that he had created, which he said he was writing for research purposes. So don't expect that just saying that you are engaged in ethical hacking for research or because you are doing something to help somebody, whether it's a client or whether it's just from a good Samaritan aspect, don't expect that you are going to be okay. There are laws that protect against this sort of behavior, which again is where it comes back to making sure that you have the authority and the permission in the activities that you're engaged with.